In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a vacuum filtration using a Buchner funnel. So vacuum filtration is a very useful skill if we're trying to separate a solid from a solution or a solid from a liquid. Um, in doing a vacuum filtration, we can collect either the solid or the liquid or both. Um, so this leaves it as a, a crucial skill, especially if, you know, say we form a precipitate in a reaction and we need to filter off the liquid, or we've crystallized something and we need to uh, take off the mother liquor. So the filtration and the vacuum filtration in particular is a very useful skill to have in your organic chemistry toolbox. There's a couple pieces to a vacuum filtration. Um, one of them is going to be the sidearm flask or the sidearm Erlenmeyer flask. Um, now I have the smallest one hooked up, but they come in different sizes. We have a larger and a medium size. Um, you would choose the sidearm flask that is going to correspond to the volume of liquid you're expecting to drain through. So if you're expecting maybe 50 mils of liquid to come through your, fil your filter, you might want to choose the smaller one. If you're expecting, expecting 500 mils of fluid to come through your filter, you might want to choose the larger one. So depending on the volume of liquid that's going to be flowing through both in your uh, original solution and in your washes, um, you want to choose the correct size accordingly. Now the piece that actually does the filtering is called the Buchner funnel. Now the Buchner funnel is a similar to a regular funnel where it's got a top part that you can pour into and a, a narrower end at the bottom to filter into the flask. But the difference is it's got little holes at the bottom of the, the top filter part. And this is actually where the vacuum is going to be pulled. In putting a filter paper on top of these little holes, we can leave the solid behind and pull through all of the liquid. Um, this is a plastic Buchner funnel. Um, they make glass ones. They also make ceramic ones. The nice part about these plastic ones is the top and the bottom come off for easy cleaning. Um, but ceramic ones are, are a little more um, common in research laboratories. The plastic ones do get stained and, and are not as, as efficient as the ceramic ones. So this is the Buchner funnel. Now in between the Buchner funnel and the sidearm flask, this doesn't just sit on it like, uh, like that. We have to actually create a seal since plastic on glass does not create a seal. So we do have a rubber ring that is a little bit fluted um, and that will sit in between the Buchner funnel and the sidearm flask. Um, it is important to note that the, since the, the Buchner funnel has a point at the end, it does have a direction in which you want it to point. Um, in general, we take our sidearm flask and we take our Buchner funnel and have the point, the opening pointing away from the sidearm flask or from the sidearm itself. Um, this is less important in an organic chemistry lab and more important in labs where you're using a higher power vacuum. Um, if you have the opening facing the sidearm, uh, you run the risk of sucking the liquid right out as it comes through into the vacuum. And for expensive vacuum pumps, this can be a big hazard and a very expensive uh, mistake. Um, again, for these labs where we're using water pressure to create the vacuum, not so much of an issue, but in labs where you're doing uh, high, high vacuum filtration, you would want to make sure that this, this opening is pointing away from the sidearm to avoid sucking in liquid. Now the filter paper is, the size of the filter paper is dependent on the size of the Buchner funnel. Um, there is various sizes of Buchner funnels depending on how much solid you're trying to filter. You just want to make sure the filter paper is the correct size for your Buchner funnel so that it covers the entirety of the bottom. Um, if it is too large, um, it'll buckle up and it will, won't lay flat against the bottom. If it's too small, it may leave some of those holes that you saw before um, exposed and the solid can fall right through. So it's very important to make sure you're choosing the correct size filter paper. Um, this sits on the top like so with the filter paper inside, the rubber ring to create the seal, and the sidearm flask on the bottom. I've already attached the hose that connects to the sidearm on the sink. 
The side arm on the sink is what's going to create the vacuum. The water will uh, go directly down and the negative pressure created by the water flow will create a vacuum coming down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a vacuum filtration. Um, this might get a little bit loud with the sink running, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to hear me explaining it. Um, the steps in which we do a vacuum filtration is we're going to turn on the water or turn on the vacuum pump, whichever one you're using. Um, I'm then going to take a solvent bottle. In this case, my solvent is water, so I'm just going to wash my my uh, filter paper with water and let it pull through. What that's going to do is it's going to allow the filter paper to adhere to the Buchner funnel and create a seal. So when I do end up pouring my solution and uh, heterogeneous mixture into my filter, it doesn't go around the outsides of the filter paper and fall through the bottom. So we want to make sure we wash with solvent, uh, whatever solvent you're using in your filtration. You want to make sure you wash with solvent first to adhere the filter paper to the Buchner funnel, otherwise you run the risk of losing product. So with the vacuum still on, it's going to suck a little bit of water through, the filter paper will look wet. And then I'm going to take my reaction mixture, in this case I have sand and water, I'm going to swirl it around pretty vigorously to make sure that it's suspended in the solution, and then I'm going to pour it fast. The goal of a vacuum filtration is to get all of the solid that's in my flask, beaker, Erlenmeyer flask, whatever I'm using, the goal is to get all of the solid that's in here out onto the filter paper. So after I do the initial pour, I'm going to take my wash bottle or a pipette with solvent and rinse my, my beaker out to get the, any remaining bits of solid that are left. Um, again, the goal is to get all of the solid out, especially if I'm collecting the solid. I want to make sure I get it all out so I can, you know, go on to the next reaction with it or weigh it and get a percent yield or um, do whatever reactions or chemistry is necessary with the solid. So we're going to turn on the water now and we're going to do a vacuum filtration. <laughs> So one of the nice things about a vacuum filtration is you should be able to feel when the vacuum is going. If I put my hand over and press down, oh yeah, I can feel a strong vacuum. In fact, it sucks my hand, uh, my palm into the, into the funnel almost instantly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wash bottle, I'm going to spray a little bit of water, and what we'll see is the water starts coming through the bottom. Um, the filter paper is now adhered. I'm actually going to make sure it's a little wetter. Um, it doesn't really matter how much solvent you put through on this one. You really just want to make sure you put enough to adhere it to the filter so when you pour your solid, you don't lose it through the bottom. I'm now ready to do my vacuum filtration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to swirl it pretty vigorously to try and get the sand suspended and I'm going to pour it fast. Again, the goal is to get as much of the sand or your solid out in one go. So I was actually able to get all of the sand out in one go, but in just in case I didn't, there's microscopic particles that I can't see. I'm going to take a little bit of water or whatever solvent I'm using and I'm going to wash it. This also serves the purpose of washing the solid um, in case there's any impurities I want to remove. And I'm going to pour it over the solid. And I would do that a couple times if I didn't have everything out. To encourage drying, I can always put my hand over the Buchner funnel and it will pull any remaining water out of the solid or, or whatever solvent you're using. And you'll see that the water is now in the bottom. Uh, the sand has successfully been separated, so it's all dry on the top now. And we've successfully done a vacuum filtration. At the end, I would just reach over and turn off my water, and this Buchner funnel will lift right off. So I now have dry solid that I can go on to the next step with, get a percent yield, mass it, get a melting point. Whatever I need to do with the solid, I can now move on to the next step.